as far as other crypto uh, uh, currencies, Ether being the biggest. Ether has a better shot of becoming a commodity. I mean, you could argue that if the future lies in blockchain transactions and Ether is going to be a better lubricant of those blockchain transactions, right. you could actually argue that Ether has a stronger upside story than Bitcoin does. Millennials are the reason we're in a bull market for equities and that this leg of the bull market uh, won't end until 2026. Coinbase is another name that you hold as well. and. Uh, some remarks this week by John Paulson, uh, I think got a lot of people up in arms, so to speak, in the crypto community, saying that he views it as uh, crypto is, is worthless. Um, what do investors like that who criticize crypto, what don't they understand? Uh, well, uh, first of all, let me just finish up on Robinhood. They have pivoted already to crypto in a in a magnificent way. So just wanted to finish that one up. Uh, John Paulson is... Um, he made an incredible call during the mortgage crisis. He has been uh, a, a gold bug, I would say, for uh, most of his career. Uh, and many uh, investors who have spent uh, who have spent their careers focused on gold cannot understand the digital uh, concept associated with gold. Uh, what we think he's missing is this is much more than just a, a store of value or digital gold. Uh, uh, Bitcoin in particular is a new uh, global monitor, monetary system. It's a rules-based monetary policy, um, which is uh, completely decentralized and therefore uh, is, is not um, subject to the whims of policymakers. In fact, it's a hedge against the whims of uh, policymakers, especially in emerging markets. And uh, as far as other crypto uh, uh, currencies, Ether being the biggest, uh, we're seeing the DeFi movement, decentralized finance, Again, uh, Chairman Gensler is going to take a close look at it, uh, which I think will be good. Let's just get the regulators on board, uh, because at the end of the day, what we think uh, decentralized finance is doing is uh, making the finance, taking the friction out of a lot of financial services and taking a lot of the middlemen out of financial services. Uh, so uh, that is also a good thing. Um, other than that, you know, there's some... I, I don't know how closely uh, John Paulson and some of the other naysayers have looked at it, but I know there have been conversions. Ray Dalio has been a conversion, Stanley Druckenmiller, uh, and you know these are very thoughtful uh, investors uh, who who at one point thought. Bitcoin was a Ponzi scheme, and uh, in some cases, and uh, have been converted. And I think one of the reasons they, they have been converted is when you think about what blockchain technology is doing, it is putting into place uh, uh, via the internet the payments ecosystem that was not put in place in the early days of the internet because it was never conceived with commerce in mind. It was for defense departments and intelligence. It was for academics. It was for information exchange, not commerce. When you fill in the picture with blockchain technology, all you're doing is saying, yes, uh, there's a more efficient way of doing commerce. We just didn't know commerce was going to be a part of the Internet in the 80s and early 90s. Now, a lot of the crypto bulls, Kathy, they'll, they'll say that regulation is good for crypto. Are you in that camp? I think uh, KYC, AML, so know your customer, anti-money laundering is good for, for the ecosystem. Uh, I, I do believe uh, that is true. I think what's confusing from a regulatory point of view is the different definitions of crypto depending on the uh, regulator. Uh, so the SEC in terms uh, of Bitcoin has described it as not a security. The IRS says it's property. Uh, the CFTC uh, says it's more like a commodity. And I think if 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 regulators get together and agree on what uh, exactly these cryptocurrencies are, how to define them, that will be a good thing. Just certainty um, will be a good thing for this ecosystem. 
And really underlying uh, the move higher in, in a Robinhood's shares, Coinbase, crypto markets, it's that rise of the retail investor, Kathy. And, uh, and very much you have a loyal following of those retail investors. Looking out over the next few years, how important will the rise of the, the retail investor be and in, in in where the market goes from day to day? Yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to Tom Lee from uh, Fundstrat. He uh, he picked up on a study that uh, Stan Salvikson, who was the chief strategist of Merrill Lynch in the 80s, uh, when I was just coming of age in this market, Stan um, had a hypothesis that the baby boomers would make for 15 to 20 years of a bull market in equities. And that's what happened. Uh, it was a very simple assumption and it played out beautifully. Uh, Tom Lee, uh, I don't even think he referenced that study, but has taken the notion that millennials are the reason we're in a bull market for equities and that this leg of the bull market uh, won't end until 2026. And I think he thinks that the bull market uh, with some fit, fits and starts after that could actually extend to 20. 38, I believe it is, which is the year that the number of millennials peak. So this is the echo of the baby boom. I lived through the baby boom years and and that equity market move. Uh, it was magnificent. Uh, it was a very simple assumption and, and it worked. And uh, I do feel I do feel we are we are in um, in the same place now. You know, there was less and less of it as our markets moved into more benchmark sensitive territories after the tech and telecom bust and then the 08, 09 meltdown. So much so that uh, uh, analysts and, and portfolio managers felt they were taking a huge risk investing in a stock that was not in an index. Well, guess what? A lot of innovation uh, it, which is all about the future, is uh, not captured by indices. In fact, very little of it, we believe, is captured by the indices. And so I felt starting a business on that premise to focus exclusively on disruptive innovation would become uh, productive. And, and it has, because we have never been in a period ever in history where we've had five major innovation platforms involving 14 different technologies, all moving into S-curves, the S-curves feeding one another, we're in a, a period of explosive innovation. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I think that as more and more um, investors and analysts do the research that we're doing, and we give our research away, we're happy uh, for anyone. I'm a subscriber, uh, I, I've signed up. There you go. There you go. So thank you very much, Brian. Uh, but we feel one of our missions and values is to educate because we feel like there's been a dearth uh, of education in the financial markets around innovation because of this backwards looking benchmark sensitive uh, style that evolved out of two crashes. Uh, so many people ask me, are we in a bubble? We couldn't be further from it. I do not believe that investors, uh, 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 the average investor, shall I say, understands how provocative uh, this, these next five to 15 years are going to be as these S-curves feed one another and, um, and enter exponential growth trajectories that uh, we have never seen before.